Bringing sci-fi devices to life in some form is really rewarding. Bringing my cinema-inspired fantasies to life in my own home. These lightsabers would not stand up to a fight, but they make great wall lights. Uh, let me show you how. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi, Pico, Robotics, IoT, and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. In some ways, this video is a return to a well-trodden path for me. I've built some lightsaber wall lights to a similar design twice before, but that was before the Pico W launched. This time, I wanted to switch to the Pico W as the workhorse. I'll look at the project at a couple of levels. How can I produce an animated blade from a simple point of view? Then how have I made this a really complicated IoT project? with concepts like digital twins to store state. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I hope to see you there too. Please hit the like button on the video and subscribe for more. The nice thing about virtual desks is um, they're sort of extendable, and I can actually fit my uh, lightsaber on it, which I can't always in reality. Um, but anyway, I've built several lightsaber projects um, over the years. In fact, my first one predates the Pico W, and I had to use a Wi-Fi module in order to actually enable it and get it online, because my lightsabers are IoT devices. So I used an ESP01S which is sort of a Wi-Fi serial module based on the ESP8266. Um, so it acts as a coprocessor and you basically send it um, AT commands in order to connect and actually to do clever things like MQTT or web services. So they're quite nice. Would I do that again though? Um, probably not. It's, it's a world of, of pain and trouble that um, we don't need to go to because we've got Pico W. The next lightsaber I actually built, I built for a competition. So I built this based on a WizNet board. Um, again, not necessarily a board I would choose to use again, mainly because the Pico W is just so good and so useful. But the WizNet board is quite interesting. It's um, a RP2040 completely Pico uh, pinout, but uh, it uses this uh, Wiz Fi 360 coprocessor to provide the Wi-Fi. And again, I can outsource quite a lot of the high level protocols to that chip, which is quite nice and quite useful at times. Um, I lean more to perhaps the um, Ethernet modules that uh, WizNet produce than the Wi-Fi, because if I'm just doing Wi-Fi, I probably just use a Pico W. So finally, um, God knows how many years later, I finally got to actually building a lightsaber uh, and updating my design to actually use the Pico W. I could not produce these videos without help from my sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. I first came across Wolf SSL when I was working on an IoT project and trying to secure MQTT. I needed a library to help add TLS to my communication. Wolf SSL has a great library for just that, under either open source or commercial license, with support too. I've been using it on Pico and Pico W projects ever since. Wolf SSL have other great products too, including a crypto library, a secure boot process to validate firmware, SSH clients, and TPM20, a trusted platform module library. Whether you're a hobbyist or are building commercial embedded systems, Wolf SSL's products are fabulous accelerators. So please do check out Wolf SSL. Building a lightsaber blade is actually pretty easy using a Pico. Um, the blade themselves is just really a strip of LEDs. They're WS2812B LEDs, which are serially interface and controlled. So, you know, we've just got uh, the power plus uh, a serial input line, and we can then control all the LEDs. And for this project and for a blade, what I used was basically a meter of these, which is 144 separate um, LEDs, each of which is RGB. 
So this project actually here on this breadboard isn't actually a lightsaber, but it's got basically the, the same basics of, of, of the lightsaber that I've built. Um, just let me take the LEDs off so you can see the uh, board a little bit more clearly. So all really this is, is that strip of LEDs. Yes, I've only got um, 11 of them there and I've got 144 of them inside my uh, blade. They're basically what's plugged into that board and plugged into the, uh, the Pico. So we've got a Pico W there on the left hand side. And then we've got that thing in the middle there, which is actually a uh, level converter because one of the problems with WS2812B LEDs is they really want to run at 5 volts, particularly when you've got 144 of them. And uh, so you need to have a 5 volt signal. To have a 5 volt signal, we need to use a level converter with a Pico, and that's all that is. And then on the right hand side is just what I'm using for coding and, pro and debugging. So don't worry about that at all. So, so really it's just those three components, the Pico W, a level converter, and then a strip of LEDs. And that's it. And that's how you build your um, lightsaber. Now, of course, we don't just have a floppy set of um, LEDs, which we can animate and change uh, the color on. Um, we, we need it into a blade. And for a blade, all I'm using basically is an acrylic tube um, that is uh, a metre long and one millimetre uh, thick wall, which is enough to actually allow the light to permeate and to just surround the tube and make it glow. And that's what gives you the effect that it looks like we've got a lightsaber. Animating the blade, of course, is just controlling these WS2812B LEDs. And I did a whole load of how to do that in a course on Udemy on the Pico Micro Projects course, which uses a circle of um, LEDs and actually animates things like, you know, chase patterns and things. Um, so go check out that course. Um, I'd appreciate, you know, your support on that. Now, finally, of course, we can't just have a blade with no handle. We've got to make it look like a lightsaber. And so I use my 3D printer to print out um, a simple handle to actually go below it and to look like we have that um, mantle for projecting the blade on the top. But it's all just 3D printed um, uh, plastic. The assets for my Pico W lightsaber project are in the um, Lsaber 2 project um, on GitHub. There's also an Alsaber 1 project up there, which has got some of the older assets, things like actually printing the handles and the 3D models for that, and the PCB, because the PCB I've used actually for this project is the same one I used previously. Um, it's just been able to reuse it between the two projects. Of course, my lightsaber is a little bit more than just a glowing sword. Um, I have made this much more complicated because I made it an IoT device. So my lightsaber actually does talk to the network and can, can communicate. In fact, it uses um, MQTT as a protocol, sort of the IoT protocol. And therefore, it talks to a broker, which it authenticates with on my network. EMQX is a really nice little MQTT broker, and it has a nice little plugin to, um, for authentication using MySQL. The broker itself lives within Docker in my environment. Now my lightsaber has state and it has state that I really want to maintain across power cycling. So, you know, the color of the, um, the blade, actually how the blade pattern changes uh, over night. My blades don't illuminate fully at night. They actually only illuminate the tip so that it doesn't become too distracting. Um, so where do I hold all of that information? Well, I hold all of that within a digital twin that I've placed on the network. And I've got a twin manager that's actually holding that. This is just a simple bit of Python code that's sit, sitting there providing those services out to any of my IoT devices. And of course, I need a user interface to manage this because I want to actually configure my lightsabers, what color the blades are, what time the blades uh, switch to different patterns, etc. All of that I can do through a really simple um, UI. Now, of course, 
me being me, I happen to have chosen Elcast. Now that is a bit, yeah. Can I really have a Star Trek user interface for a Star Wars device? Perhaps that's sacrilege. Um, and I apologize for the purists out there, but that's how I've built it and in my interface right now. Now the IoT stack that I've built is based on Core MQTT from FreeRTOS. And um, I've put all of my understanding of how to build these sorts of stacks and actually provide IoT capability to a Pico W into a course on Udemy called the IoT with the Raspberry Pi Pico W. Um, go check it out. A project to actually just build a blade is very easy to control from a Pico or Pico W. All you need is the Pico W, um, 144 or a meter of WS2812B LEDs, um, a 330 ohm resistor, which is what you're meant to use to uh, connect between the um, signal line and the actual um, WS2812B LEDs. A logic level shifter to go from 3.3 .3 up to 5 volts. And then I tend to put on a 1000 microfarad capacitor just because when all of these LEDs suddenly turn on, they draw a hell of a lot of current suddenly and some power supplies will actually brown out the Pico at that point, which means that the lights then go out. So um, to protect that, it's good I practice to put a capacitor on. I control my um, blade using, well, first of all, a very simple switch, which is just a pull to ground switch. But also I've put a PIR sensor on there, and that's using an AM312. Uh, these are, are quite sensitive devices and give quite a lot of false positives. So to tame them and uh, stop them reacting, particularly to Wi-Fi signals, and unfortunately it's sitting quite close to the Wi-Fi transmitter on the Pico W, I use uh, a couple of capacitors um, in parallel with it. I'm really interested in what the status, whether the device is actually connected okay to the network and if everything is working okay. So I've got an RGB LED that just gives me some feedback um, and it's just you know connected like most other LEDs onto my uh, Pico. Power is a big concern for me when working with these um, lightsabers. Okay, they're not lightsabers, they're not actually drawing huge amounts of current that's going to burn the whole place down. But they are drawing quite a bit of current. 144 LEDs um, does actually draw about 5 amps. So you need a power supply that's greater than 5 amps to provide that. Um, I've also put a 5 amp fuse in there just to make sure that we do handle things if we get short. And I've put a thermal fuse in there as well just in case the whole thing warms up a lot. Just to be safe. Um, I had a few uh, near misses when I was building these things uh, with wires that uh, um, nearly melted because of the amount of current we're actually pouring for, through to light those LEDs. So do take care with those. And of course we need a bit of hardware. So my white acrylic tube, uh, a one meter long, 20 millimeter hole is perfect for a blade. And then some 3D printed parts to actually give me the nice handle and sort of mantle and make it look all good. So doing my best um, Yoda impression here. And uh, you can see a nice uh, blue uh, illuminated lightsaber wall light in my hand. And now let's turn to the dark side and uh, just show that I can actually change its colour to red. These never look quite as very, uh, vivid um, on video as they do actually in reality. But of course these are IoT devices and uh, you can see that I've got one on the wall there. So actually, you know, they, they do talk to each other and they actually do trigger each other as well. So uh, there we go. You see one, one turning on the other. I've had the lightsaber wall lights in my hall for about five years now. I always get compliments from guests and visitors, which is lovely. It's certainly the big project which pushed me to do more in the world of IoT, robotics and fun tech. Ultimately one stepping stone to what brought me to this world here today. Moving the project to use a Pico W also simplifies things for me. 
I'm moving to a very common platform for IoT or web services client devices in my world, and that will help me accelerate my builds. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using the super thanks button below the video. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to open source in San Francisco next year, and I appreciate your help in getting me there. And I hope to see you there too. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like button and please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Bye bye for now.